Hey guys, Rock18 here with another World of Warplanes video. This time we're going to be doing an instructional video of sorts about uh, what I think are some of the best mouse control settings in version 1.5.1. Now, in 1.5, of course, uh, a lot of things changed, not all of them for the better. And the controls especially changed a lot, and the stated reason for this was because they had to change flight mechanics for some unspecified upcoming change. Uh, there have been no specific uh, other reasons given for what that change might be or what might it entail. But one of the things you should keep in mind is that World of Tanks, which is of course World Gaming's flagship product, is expected to be incorporating the Havoc engine in future updates, potentially as soon as 9.4. So in that sense, it seems like Havoc engine support and thus multi-core support might be a pretty good guess. But of course, we don't know anything for certain. But anyhow, controls change up completely, and there's some things you should know and you should do to try to get your game to be as playable as you can. I have actually uh, reverted to default control settings just so I can have a clean slate to start from and show you what it is that I've been using. For keyboard, I don't actually make a lot of changes. I make a few. Um, one of the things I like to do though, uh, first of all, is for flight, uh, A and D are now bound to the roll keys by default, which is great because that way you can you know, actually force it over when you need it to do something or you want it to go and turn a specific direction. I also bind pitch up to the space key. I find that's uh, very useful because I only really need pitch up in an emergency C type situation, like when I'm trying to pull out of a dive so I don't crash, or when I'm trying to uh, pull up over, if I'm flying an IL, to pull up over a, a ship so I don't hit the superstructure as I pass over, that kind of thing. I do bind the uh, rudder left and rudder right keys to one and three, that's just what I use, but even still, I don't use those uh, the yaw function very much at all. And I have, since I use my uh, space bar for pitch up, I have bombs uh, mapped to my two key. So that's more or less it. Uh, let's see. And oh, I do bind pitch down as well. Actually, that should be changed. I like to use the tilde key for that. Uh, there are, of course, uh, all kinds of schemes that people use. Uh, it's really just a matter of personal preference. Just find what works for you. In sensitivity, I have it <clears throat> turned down just slightly. Uh, a lot of people like to play with it it's turned all the way up. I actually have a pretty high DPI mouse. I have a Razer gaming mouse that has a 3500 DPI. And so with the sensitivity right about here, I still have good uh, course control when I want it to turn, but I can still aim well when I'm on someone's tail. If we go into advanced settings, there's a few things you need to do. First of all, you need to make extra sure that this basic settings only thing is unchecked. Um, if you don't have, if you have that checked, all the stuff down here won't actually apply. And it's kind of a, a flaw in the UI design here right now because it doesn't actually gray out some settings. So you might be thinking that you're changing things and just nothing actually happens. I discovered this flaw through the vertical inversion function, which is something I use just because I've used it uh, forever and ever, going back to Commodore 64 days, all the flight games I played were with vertical inversion. But of course, that's completely optional and it's a matter of preference and style. Uh, starting from the top here, in camera, I do use free camera. I find that this helps minimize the uh, occasions when the camera gets locked in an in inverted state, which if, when you're maneuvering or doing loops and that kind of thing, which becomes very difficult to work with sometimes when you're trying to uh, finish off a kill. So I play with the free camera. That's just what I like the best. For camera inertia, I have it set to zero. I, I find this... Uh, I just find this to be the best for me, and with alignment zone to 100%, because why not? For roll rate, I actually have determined through some experimentation that if you play with free camera at least, I can't determine that this setting actually makes one heck of a lot of difference one way or the other. Uh, I know players who play with it at 100%, I know people who play with it at 0%. I, for a while, I had it set at about 78% just because I finally got things to be comfortably flyable for me and I just kind of left it there. But again, with free camera at least, I can't tell that it actually does very much. 
For camera alignment time, I have that turned down to 0% because I really just can't imagine too many situations in which it would be helpful to introduce some kind of camera lag, so that one seems like kind of a no-brainer to me. Target tracking adjustment, I experimented with some. I can't see that it, it really actually helps very much, and in the end I kind of decided that I don't want Wargaming flying my plane for me, so I leave it unchecked. Moving over to the other right-hand column here. For level off rate, I like it at about 6 or 7%. What this does is when you come out of a turn, for instance, it will return your wings to level. The problem with this is that if you are, say, uh, turning on the tail of a less maneuverable aircraft, like if you're in a zero chasing a, a bow fighter or something like that, the plane, if you're in a left-hand turn and you have this level off rate set to uh, the default, which I think is pretty high, the plane will actually turn back to the right if you don't need all your roll rate to keep up. And this can be very annoying because it feels like the plane is fighting your turn, and I don't like that at all. I do want it to have some return ability when I come out of a steep turn, and so I leave it about 6%. For roll acceleration, 100% because why not? Uh, I can't imagine any situation in which you would not want your plane to roll as quick as it could, even in an aisle or something like that. Uh, the automatically rolling turns I have unchecked, and the, I've tried it several different ways, and one of the things I found that with, when you have this checked is that if you try to make a turn from left to right, the nose will have a tendency to dip a little bit, and that's something that I found really, really frustrating, especially when you're on someone's tail and you're trying to complete a kill. I found it just made it very, very difficult to aim. And I'm not exactly sure what exactly the function of this sh is intended to be, because even with the box unchecked, when you move your cursor left to right, the plane still rolls. So uh, I'm not sure what they were trying to go for there. In the more options section here, as I've explained before, I play with vertical inversion. Of course, that's totally up to you. This automatic flaps should not be checked, in my opinion. This is basically a training wheels kind of setting. This is something that for brand new players might be helpful if you're still fighting, you know, tier one and two turn fighters and you're just basically chasing each other around the screen. It might be helpful to have planes that have flaps available engage automatically uh, when you're still new and you don't understand the flight mechanics or the game mechanics very well. But above about tier three or tier four or after, you know, once you've played for a couple of weeks, you really should not check that because what will happen is when you're trying to turn, the game will engage flaps for you, and while this will have the benefit of making a turn a little sharper, this bleeds a lot of energy and a lot of speed, and this can be very, very problematic once you start getting into planes like the uh, ME-109 and such, where you really want to retain your speed and energy so you can maintain an advantage. I also do uncheck the limit bank angles at low altitude. I guess this is a setting that's intended to prevent new players from crashing too much, but I can't see how it would possibly really be useful. Um, I don't know. I, leave it, I think experienced check players should leave it unchecked. As for the yaw and pitch uh, graph, I actually leave it at the default 100%, and I don't mess with the curve here at all. I've tried it a few times, and in conversations with a few other players who play with uh, various other patterns. Like a common pattern is something like this, a curve a little bit. Um, I didn't find it to be to my liking. I found that it made the, the movement of the aircraft unpredictable and I didn't like it. And ex in experimenting with so many things, I just decided to leave it up there at the default straight across the top curve. That was what worked best for me. And so there we have it. Um, I think part of the problem right now with the controls in 1.5.1 and part of the reason so many people are complaining is there's not really a good uh, guide or explanation, which is why I've made this video. In fact, on the main World of War game, uh, World of Warplanes uh, wiki for this, the controls uh, section is actually several versions out of date. In fact, I think they're actually the original 1.0 uh, controls. It just doesn't help very much. And part of the problem, too, is some of the descriptions you get, like uh, 
Let's see, camera roll rate here. This description is just terrible. Adjust camera roll rate when it's in the leftmost position, set to the minimum, when it's in the right, it's the maximum. Well, no kidding. It's like, did I not know how a slider button worked? So, I don't know. This is what I have found. This is what I have found that makes the game feel as good as it can for me right now, at least. It still doesn't, I don't have the one with the playing feel I had in earlier versions, but at least this got it to somewhere for me that's, you know, finally playable. So, I hope this helps, and I hope this helps uh, some people in their experience with the game 1.5.1 until we can see what comes down the pipe next. Anyhow, uh, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, please leave them below or leave them in the uh, discussion thread that I'll post a link to below. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.